welcome back to Wild Carcanade. I'm so glad that you stopped by. It is Monday, March 30th, 2020, and we did our hiking update yesterday rather than today. I ran across this article from Tim Pool of Timcast this morning, and we're going to listen to just a snippet of it because Tim gives us some pretty interesting and straightforward information. Since the beginning of the coronavirus pandemic, which started in Wuhan, China, the Chinese government has been lying every step of the way to the U.S. and many other countries. These lies resulted in a delayed reaction from our country and many others, which resulted in a loss of control and a major loss of life. Now, many people speculated, why would China lie about this? Well, first of all, China lies about a lot of things. Many people thought it was because they're trying to save face. They didn't want to be held responsible for what was really going on. But now we have evidence to suggest that China is lying to us to actively hurt us. Dare I say, actively kill our people and people in many other countries. In a story from the Sydney Morning Herald, Chinese backed companies were sending millions of pieces of medical equipment to China at a time when everyone was downplaying this, particularly China. They were lying about it. Yet these companies were instructed to round up as much supplies, as many pieces of medical equipment as they could and send it back to China. You see, China knew what was going on and they didn't want us to find out because they wanted a chance to get our resources first. Now, it is being suggested they are using this opportunity for predatory economic policies targeting our countries and others. And it's worse than that. They're sending faulty pieces of medical equipment to many other countries that are now reacting negatively, saying this is on purpose. We should not be trusting China. This started in another country. And then they were honest with us. We could have got a better handle on things. But China, it would seem, is actively trying to hurt us. Now we're hearing the U.S. may expel who they say are Chinese spies in media. And this is in response to China expelling our journalists. It's very likely China is lying still about what's going on in their country. The U.K. believes that the official numbers they've put out are wrong. And it could be 15 to 40 times worse than, the, than what they're actually saying, which would mean we're in this for the long haul. We're in this and things are going to get bad. In Italy, they're already seeing a breakdown of social order. They're seeing the same thing in China. And China is lying so they can come out on top. They want us to be hurt, not just the United States, but Australia and countries in Europe as well. We have to stop trusting them and we have to protect ourselves. Now let's look at the tracker that I've been using. This is from GIS and GIS and data maps from the ARCIGS.com website. And this is the one I've been using the whole time. So the total confirmed deaths um, by province, state, or dependency, 67,801 confirmed in, I'm going to say this is Hubei, China. But look at the next highest figure right below it, 59,746 confirmed in New York and 13,000 and some change in New Jersey. Well, that kind of confirms what Tim has said. But I want to look at my own state because you guys know I live in Michigan. This is my state, this little thing that kind of looks like a running dog or something up here and all of the mitten down here. This is Wisconsin and we share quite a long border with Wisconsin. We're going to concentrate on my own state. So in my own state, 132 confirmed deaths to date, 34 in Oakland County, 20 in Macomb and 56 in Wayne. That is 110 deaths in this area right here. And when you hear me complaining about Southeast Michigan, it's this area right here. The rest of the state, you can see uh, hardly anything. And these are active cases, these handful, one or two up here. Um, and then in the upper lower, the highest count is Otsego County. They have 17 confirmed cases, zero deaths, zero recovered. They're all active cases. That is not my county. That is north of me. And you can see the rest of the state, it's just kind of scattered. It's always southeast Michigan that gives the rest of the state so many headaches. The next thing I want to show you is something that a Michigan doctor wrote. I have featured it already. I've tweeted it out. And this was on March 28th that this article was updated, but it was posted on March 25th, 2020. 
and it has to do with what you should do when you bring your groceries home or your packages uh, that are received. And he says, leave the groceries outside for three days if possible. And he also shows you how to disinfect. We're not going to play the video, but I have tweeted out and posted on Facebook this link. And he, there is a correction here uh, right at the top. Let's see if I can get a highlight for you. I always forget how to use this highlight uh, until I actually use this highlight. Editor's note, the article previously gave, so that would have been on the 25th, um, in an incorrect amount of time that coronavirus can live on cardboard. This virus can live on cardboard for one day. Um, so if you've got two-day shipping with Prime, then by the time, in theory, by the time you receive your packages, the virus should be dead. Nevertheless, this doctor is urging us to take an extra three days precaution, if at all possible. Leave it in the garage. Go buy yourself a metal garbage can and put everything in the garbage can if you don't have a um, if you don't have a garage or a secure cardboard uh, carport imagine that groceries are covered in glitter and your goal at the end of this is not to have any glitter in your house on your hands or especially on your face Van Wiggen said imagine that disinfectants and soap have the power to dissolve that glitter that's a great mental picture um, to think about when you're thinking about how to protect your family from what comes in from the outside. And then he gives a both food service and um, hospital, hospital or medical procedure on how to actually disinfect this stuff that comes into your house in the package. If you can't uh, put it outside, you can put it in a freezer and the freezer will do the same job. So these are just options, and I'm going to leave you these links. These links will be part of the permanent broadcast show notes for the rest of the duration of this emergency that we're going through. So let's talk about what my experience was over the weekend. I went on to Amazon to pick up what I know I can't get in my regular grocery store ever. Uh, somebody send me some leaks. It's kind of a joke. The thing that I noticed this weekend, admittedly, I shopped on the busiest day of the week in the United States, which was early Saturday morning when I started. And I have the ability to get... 30, or at that time, I had the ability to get $35 worth of groceries or more shipped free if I ordered them out of pantry. So I did. But let me tell you what happened. And, uh, the vendors, not Amazon, but the vendors that Amazon deals with were limiting you to one piece of whatever product. So if you ordered canned corn, for example... You could only order one can of corn. So what should have taken me maybe an hour to do actually ended up taking several hours to do because things kept falling out of my cart. And in the end, I had to sign up for Amazon Prime in order to ensure that all of my products that I ordered wouldn't fall out of my cart before I crossed the $35 threshold, which I did successfully. So what's your takeaway from this? If you're ordering from Prime, your shipping dates are going to be staggered. They're also going to be a little bit longer than expected, and you will have to have a list prepared when you go on Amazon Prime to get your shopping done as quickly as possible so that you don't run into things being removed out of your cart because they're out of stock already. This really happened. Should have probably recorded it, but I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Anyway, also, I want to encourage you to stay as 
healthy as possible. Get out and walk. Get in the fresh air. Get in the sunshine. If you feel, you know, a little off, as I do right now, make sure that you have um, some good, healthy options. I don't have a fire cider made right now. Uh, I'll go into fire cider, at, or you can just look in my food playlist. But what I did have was airborne. I had some unflavored gelatin, which is protein, and I had some Gatorade. So, you know, into the microwave, all that stuff went. I heated it up to dissolve it. I waited till it dropped down to 111. Fahrenheit and I dropped in a very generous teaspoon of honey. Don't put it in liquid that's above 110 or 111 because the beneficial bacteria and so forth, all the benefits of honey will be um, killed off or diminished. One last thought, by no means do I want to scare people with this broadcast. My intention from the first when I first started talking about this about five, four or five weeks ago is to give you some suggestions to put power in your own hands. And that's why that graphic was entitled Fight Back. You can take control of what is going on in your life and manage it successfully. I'm happy to welcome two new subscribers. Welcome, welcome. If you have tips and tricks for us, please leave them in the comments. We're happy to have them. I'll see you real soon, maybe out on the road.